Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here, continuing my series of tutorials on how to use the tracker in After Effects. In this particular case, we're going to use the tracker and the clone stamp tool to cover up a part of the image with another part of the image. In this particular case, there's a logo on this painter's shoulder, and I want to cover up that logo. Lots of times folks don't like to have logos showing up in videos that might be for commercial purposes, and so we're going to cover that logo up. This is my artist friend, Brooks Anderson, uh, here in Santa Rosa, and we're going to uh, take care of that logo. And right now you're going, what logo? It looks like a yellow stripe on his shoulder. What's the big deal? But uh, if we zoom in on it, you'll uh, see that uh, there's a logo there or at least the corporate or product name. So we're going to cover that guy up. And the way you cover that up is with the clone stamp tool. And if you work with Photoshop, that's pretty easy. You just uh, use the clone stamp tool and clone, let's say, some area of your shirt and put that on top of the words, and you're done. The thing about Photoshop is that it's one frame. That's one image. And here in After Effects, we're deal dealing with 30 frames a second, a whole different world when you're talking about video versus one photograph. So how do we do this? We use the clone stamp tool and the tracker such that we can put the clone on top of this thing and have that clone follow the motion of the shirt as we go through this zoom and the tracker will be the source of the keyframes. The problems arise though if you make a clone and then as you pull the video back that clone will start revealing video from some other place besides his shirt. So how do you deal with that? Well, one way is to use a freeze frame as your clone, which is how I'm going to uh, do things here. And the other way is to use expressions, and expressions uh, go beyond the level of uh, this tutorial. So I'm going to uh, hold off on the expressions and perhaps save that for another day. So we're going to focus on making a clone that uh, will be a freeze frame and then have that patch, that freeze frame of the patch from the shirt cover up the uh, text there on the shoulder. But uh, the freeze frame approach is kind of the easy one. And because the shirt isn't going to change much during this zoom in terms of its texture, obviously, it might change a little bit with the lighting and things like that. But it should work reasonably well. And besides, this is a demo, so don't expect perfection here, folks, OK? So first of all, we need to actually make the clone. Now, if I were to pull this video back here, what would be the purpose of making a clone once that far away? So we're going to zoom in and do the clone at, at the point after the zoom is completed right there. And to do that, I use the clone stamp tool up here and up below the menu bar. Now, if I click on this thing, uh, suddenly something's going to change on the right-hand side here. When I click on the clone stamp tool, we're going to suddenly see the brushes uh, panel go come in front and the paint panel come in front. And I'll show you that in a second. Ready? One, two, three, go. And there they are, brushes and paint. And that, that's because the open the auto open panels uh, box is checked. That's kind of by default, and that's the way I like it. So I click on the clone stamp tool, and the two important parts of the clone stamp show up. Now, the clone stamp tool is, in fact, a paintbrush. Paint is an effect inside After Effects. So it's hard to think of paint as being an effect, even though it's like a tool up here. You've got paint brushes and clone stamp tools, but in fact, it's an effect. And when you start painting with the clone stamp tool, it'll add an effect sublayer here, in which will be uh, the paint effect. And inside the paint effect will be strokes called clones, but in fact they are paint strokes that use this as a source. So just so you know, you're actually creating an effect uh, with the paintbrush. So here's how we do this. We first of all need to uh, clone something down here and put it on top of the shirt. And the way you do that is you've got the clone stamp tool ready to go. You need to select the brush, and then you uh, select an area here and then paint it on top of here. Now if I, I'm, I'm noticing that my cursor does not look like a brush. And this is like confusion point number one when people do painting, be it with a clone stamp tool or a regular brush. It's like, why isn't it working? Why can't I paint here? What's going on? Well, if I click, I get this thing, use the paint and rotor brush tools in a layer panel. Ah, uh, so we are in the comp panel, and you've got to paint inside the layer panel. And to open up the layer panel, you just double click on a layer, and there you are now in the layer panel. And some folks are going, what's the difference? Well, you can tell you're in a layer panel, number one, it says layer here versus composition here. But also when you switch between the two, you'll notice that the layer panel has a little timeline along the bottom. That's kind of your clue that you're in the layer panel. Well, now that we're in there, my cursor now turns into a brush. That's the uh, shape of the brush over here in the brushes panel. And uh, since I'm going to be painting along this line here, I could change the brush to be a little less round and more of an oval shape like that. I just dragged the roundness number here. This is called the scrubby, so you can drag these guys up and down. To change the roundness to something of an oval. 
And I can also change the angle so it sort of matches the angle of the line here. So maybe it's about 30 degrees or so. Let's change it to there, about a 30 degree angle. That's about right. And I can uh, change the hardness to be a little less hard so it's got so a softer edge. But these things are things you can adjust actually after the fact. You can do all these kinds of changes uh, inside the timeline. But let's just kind of set it up so it's done right. So that's the first part, getting the brush set up, which is not a huge deal, but you know, there it is. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger. There we go. Second part is to uh, decide uh, how you're going to paint this on, the clone uh, options, the clone properties. What we want to do is have constant and aligned. And that will give us uh, a clone that uh, will uh, then follow the video, which is, in this case, not a good thing. But I want to show you why it's not a good thing, and then we'll go do the right thing, the, the, fr the freeze frame for this particular process. So I need to sample an area in the shirt. I hold on the Alt key in Windows, or the Option key in Mac, and that turns that little brush into this sort of lifesaver looking uh, target. And I click there, and it takes a sample from the shirt. Now we got the sample, and now I can paint that on top of that layer. And lo and behold, we're done. Now, what a lot of people do when they use a paintbrush is they'll they'll do one stroke, and then they'll do one more stroke, and they'll lift their finger off the mouse button, and maybe do another stroke, and lift their finger off the mouse button. And every time you take your finger off the mouse button and click again, you add another stroke sublayer down here. I'll go down to Effects, Paint, and I've got three different paint strokes here, which all have to be animated. So that would be tedious as heck to try to animate three or more, you know, some number of paint strokes besides one. You want one paint stroke here, so don't take your finger off the uh, mouse button as you do your cloning work here, otherwise you're going to have lots of strokes to deal with. So I'm going to go Control or Command Z to undo those guys and just go back to one paint stroke. And now notice when I do the paint stroke, it makes a stroke from that point in the comp panel forward. We want to have this thing covering up the shoulder at the beginning of the clip. So I need to drag that to the left so I can fill it all the way in. And that works fine. But now watch what happens as I pull back here. As you pull back, notice that the clone area starts picking up other areas of the clip because it is, in fact, uh, you know, just picking up areas at that region where the clone was made. So it's not going to work very well uh, unless we know the secret way to apply an expression to it. So right off the bat, you know, to keep things simple, making a clone that follows the uh, video on the clip is going to be tricky unless you know how to use an expression. So we'll uh, save the explanation about how to use expressions for another day and focus on this freeze frame approach for this tutorial. So now I'm going to back up completely, undo everything I've done here and start all over. So we'll go back to the clone stamp tool and the only difference I need to do now is click this little checkbox down here inside the paint panel. Click lock source time and what that does basically is make a freeze frame at this spot uh, you know, whatever you select here will be a freeze frame that will then reside for the entire length of the clip. So I'm going to do the same process I did before. I'll take a sample from the uh, shirt and I'll paint it on with one paint stroke. I can go back and forth. This one's going to take my finger off the mouse button. It's one paint stroke. And there we are. And it's now a freeze frame rather than a video clip. And if I open up paint, you'll see that we've got this clone, but you also see that it starts there and goes forward. So now I'm going to drag that back and make it go for the whole length of the clip. And as I go back, you'll see that it's just this brown swatch there, that little patch of, uh, of uh, material off of his shirt. So we need to apply that, we need to apply motion keyframes to that uh, paint stroke to have it then follow the uh, motion of the logo on the shirt. And also later, we'll apply uh, keyframes to uh, deal with the uh, changing scale. Now you can use Tracker to look for scale uh, and motion, but it's a little tricky and for this particular case we can use uh, keyframes on scale without too much trouble. So we'll just have the tracker just follow uh, the motion of that the logo. So I'm going to actually start my track here and go backwards, which is not a method I've shown you before in the other tutorials, but I just want to give you a sense of how that works. It's also easier to do because we can really readily identify the logo here when it's up close. Right now you're saying, I can't even see the logo. But here's the other trick. When you're working inside the layer panel, there's a little drop-down uh, list here that says, you know, what do you want to see? And I don't want to see the paint stroke now. I don't want to see the clone stamp stroke, which is actually, remember, it's a paint effect. I'll just click on None, and that'll it'll go away. It hasn't officially you know, left your comp, but it's just not being displayed here in the layer panel. And now we'll go over to the tracker, which uh, we've worked with before, so it's down here available. 
uh, here on this panel, but if it wasn't here, you could always just go to Window and then select uh, Tracker. But here we are. Let's click on this tab. And there's Tracker. And I want to be able to track something in this particular clip, so I'm going to say Track Motion. And I've already got the Conceal Logo video clip selected, which is what you'd expect since it's the only layer. And now I want to say I can need to then position my track point over this logo. And right now I've got my brush tool selected, so I need to go back to the selection tool, this little guy here, and click on that. I could have pressed the shortcut of V to do this, but that's how you get back to the selection tool. And I want to zoom in a bit so I can maneuver this guy, so I'll press the controller command key and the plus key, the equals key actually, but think of it as the plus key and zoom in a bit. And I'll hold on the space bar to kind of move it around. And now we'll take this guy and drag it over and put it over the uh, logo. Now, what do I pick? Well, it's kind of tricky because you want to really, you got something diagonal here, but you can't make the uh, track point diagonal. It's always going to be a rectangle. So I'll just drag this guy out a bit. I'm telling After Effects, look for this uh, feature region inside this large area here. So it's going to look for that letter C. And, and try to track the letter C inside this larger region. So once I've got this thing selected, and the, the attach point should be right there, that's where I want to attach the uh, clone stamp, the paint. So now we're ready to go, and I'm going to analyze it. Instead of analyzing it forward, which has been the default way to do it, we're going to analyze it backwards, which is really pretty cool that you can do this. So you can see it happening. I'm going to go back to the regular fit view here. And I'll click the analyze backward, and we'll see how it tracks that as it goes backwards. So we're actually playing the clip backwards. And now I'm watching this box to see that it stays over the C. As long as it stays over the C, then the tracker is doing its job. And so far, so good. I just saw it jump a little bit. And that's probably because we're zoomed out so far now that it's not going to be quite as effective. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and uh, make some adjustments here. I saw it jump just a little bit, like right there. See it jump? So I'm going to go right there and restart the analysis. You can always back into your, your analysis and then click the uh, analyze forward or backward again and it'll remove whatever keyframes it's created and add new ones. So I'm going to zoom in, a, in again and maybe adjust this just a bit because we don't need to look this far out anymore. We can look in like that close. We don't have to have the feature area be so large. It can be right about there. So we want to keep it right there. So now we'll tell it to go back and analyze backward again. Here we go. All right, so what I did was I, I just let it go through the automatic uh, tracking analysis. And rather than show you all of that, I just uh, did a quick little dissolve here to jump ahead. But I'm telling you, it did a great job. It, that one little spot where I, I stopped it for that one moment and readjusted the feature uh, area was the only time I needed to do that. It tracked that little letter C perfectly. So now the question is, how do we apply these uh, tracker keyframes to the paint stroke? And now the standard way to do that would be to go Edit Target and then select the paint stroke somehow. But you're not allowed to select paint strokes or other effects if they don't have an effect point control in them in the layer in which, uh, they, in which you got the keyframes from the tracker. It just doesn't work. So how do you do that? Well, you can copy and paste the keyframes from here to the paint stroke, and that is the way you resolve this. So let me pull this guy out to fit again so you can see this thing happen. I'm going to open up the uh, motion tracker. I'm going to get the track points here, and I want to have the keyframes for the uh, attach point or the feature center. You'll notice that the feature center and the attach point have the more or less the exact same numbers because the attach point was almost dead center inside the feature center. So it doesn't really make a difference which one of these sets of keyframes that I use. But if you click on a property that has keyframes, then that selects all those keyframes and makes them all active. So when they're all active like that, I just go Control or Command C to copy them all. So now they're all copied. And I'm going to go down to the uh, clone stamp, to the clone's paint stroke, go down to the transform for that particular stroke. So you, each paint stroke has its own transform effect. And I'm going to paste those keyframes into the position. Now, before I paste them, I want to make sure that the current time indicator is at the beginning of those, uh, those uh, keyframes. Otherwise, it'll place them someplace that doesn't make any sense. So now that this is selected, I go Control or Command V, and that puts those uh, keyframes right there. So now if I go back to the composition view, the comp view, this little 
patch is going to be properly placed over that shoulder. Of course, the one little issue remaining to be resolved is that the patch is monstrous at the beginning. We just need to deal with the scale issue. And I told you you could deal with the scale inside the tracker, but it's a little tricky to follow this that uh, use the scale in this particular case. But you can see that it is following the motion of the shoulder pretty darn well. We might need to do a little bit of uh, adjusting here toward the end, but it, it's doing a pretty good job. So this copying and pasting keyframes is the way to uh, deal with uh, a clone stamp tool, a paint stroke like that, um, that you are able to make with a freeze frame. And then the final thing we need to do now is to do some keyframes for the scale, which we could also do on the individual paint stroke here under transform. I would keyframe scale, and I would take the scale down and have that guy be right there. And maybe change the uh, anchor point slightly, and maybe change the scale a little bit more. But you can see that I can keyframe scale, and as we go in, as we get as we get in farther, I would then change the scale to uh, accommodate the uh, the uh, fact that we've zoomed in. So let me just change the scale here, just to give you a sense of how that works. And maybe adjust the anchor point as well, just a tad. So that's how you use the clone stamp tool and the tracker to uh, take one part of a clip and have it cover up another part of the clip uh, here in After Effects.